Hi folks, welcome back to the Tabletop's Edge and our last Blitzkrieg campaign playthrough. Today we're continuing with part 3 of the 19th of December turn. Now so far today we've seen the German advance westward slow down considerably as many of the Panzer divisions have sustained heavy Panzer losses while also starting to accrue some fatigue. Now the muddy weather and the American reinforcements just complicate the situation even further for them. And even though we've got quite a number of divisions left to activate today, you have to start to wonder if the attack is beginning to lose its momentum. Well, let's find out and see what happens. The Germans are going to start off this episode by activating Kampfgruppe Piper. The situation isn't going to get any better for him, and it could get uh, worse if they delay any longer. Now... As uh, you recall from last episode, Task Force Ray has managed to cut its way into Vilsalm here and has placed itself directly on Piper's MSR, cutting it. The only other path he has is this track out here, which is blocked by the 30th Infantry Division. So Piper does not have a complete MSR. His trains are on the map, and because he cannot complete his MSR, we're going to have to remove those trains from the map. And we'll just place them here on the card for now. That's going to affect his uh, snafu roll. Now we're not going into a prepared defense, so we'll go right to the snafu roll. He is not marked with coordination. He has a fatigue level of one, so that's going to be minus one. He's not mixed. There's no game specific anymore. And now we're going to skip down to his MSR is not complete section. And the combat trains are off map, which is a further minus three. So that's going to be a minus four to Piper's snafu roll. And a six minus four becomes a two, which is a fail. Now, we can either flip that into a recovery activation, which would remove the fatigue marker, or we can attempt to... Uh, get a second activation and he re only requires a three or better to get a second activation the next time through however he's going to have an msr uh, blocked marker placed on um, placed on him which is going to turn that minus four into a minus five for his activation uh, for a snafu activation and we may uh, end up um, having to well, we won't have to worry about any isolation losses because everyone is within his command radius and everyone does have a safe path back to the HQ. So since isolation losses are not an issue, I think we are going to forgo the failure flip and uh, recovery. And instead, we're going to try to get a second activation to get him moving. So in order to get the reactivation roll, we need a three or better. And it's a bad day for Piper. That one means no second activation. Now because there was no second activation that means we don't get into the uh, preparation phase where we would evaluate his MSR and then place an MSR blocked marker. It's basically as if that that whole second activation none of that happened at all. So at the end of the 19th Piper's basically stuck where he is and we'll have to see if he can get going again on the 20th or if he can get some help to uh, somehow clear out a, uh, a, an MSR for, uh, for, his, uh, for his unit. So with that underwhelming start to the day, we're going to send it back to the Americans. We're going to leave Piper and move back down to the south here for the Americans' first activation in this episode. And they're going to finally get around to activating 101st Airborne here. This is not going to be a terribly exciting activation, but uh, it is one that's going to be important, I think, to the American defense. Now, the 101st Airborne has their trains on map here to the southeast or southwest of Bastogne, and they do have a complete MSR. We are, in fact, going to enter into a prepared defense. So we will mark them as such. And now we will make our snafu roll. You can see they um, have a fatigue level of zero. They're not marked with um, coordination. They're not mixed. And they do have a minus one for the game specific. The trains are at optimal distance, which is going to cancel that out. They're not, uh, they are crossing the streams with the 110th, unfortunately. So that's going to be a minus one. 
but they're not using tracks and are not ghosted. So minus one for the uh, 101st. And they roll considerably better than Piper did. 10, uh, 11 becomes a 10. That's a full activation, but because of the prepared defense, uh, the best we can get is a partial. And I don't... Let's see, we've got one objective marker we can place, and the question is, do we want to uh, place it? Are we going to be doing anything that might... Yeah, you know what? I think we will place that marker. Um, we'll probably place it here on the Panzer Grenadiers at Majore. Um, while we may or may not end up making an attack, we uh, might shoot some artillery at them. Uh, in any event. Uh, speaking of artillery, we have three organic and one assigned for a total of four. That's going to be halved because of the uh, partial to two points. And I think now what I'll do is I'll probably just go ahead and adjust the defensive positions for the division and we'll see whether or not we end up uh, making an actual attack here at Majore to try to clear the Panzer Grenadiers out or not. But I'll pick back up once we've got something uh, interesting for you guys to watch. Well, here's what it looks like after the uh, repositioning. We've got the 506th Regiment sort of dug in here on the northern flank. We've pulled back some of the southern perimeter here, anticipating the 110th withdrawing and sort of taking over this sector here. We don't want to get the two mixed if we can, uh, if we can avoid that. We have decided to push the 1st Battalion of the 502nd north over the Wilt Stream here next to Majore. And I don't think we're going to make an attack, but we are going to um, spot for an artillery barrage. We're going to spend both of our artillery points, um, as allowed under the special rule for the Americans in this game. Uh, we'll do a destruction barrage outside of combat. The Panzer Grenadiers are in terrain, so it's a 4, 5, or 6. And the Americans continue to shoot well. That's going to be a two-step loss for the Panzer Grenadier Battalion there. And with that, it will bring the first activation to an end. Now, we have no isolation losses we have to worry about, so it's just a matter of fatigue. We did place an objective marker, so it's going to be a 1 to increase the fatigue. A roll of 4 uh, means that no fatigue increase. And now the question is, do we want to consider doing a second activation with the 101st? And I think we may have some opportunities here. So even though they're in a prepared defense, I think we are going to try to uh, get a second activation. We're going to need a four, five, or six to do that, though. That's no problem for 101st with the five. The um, snafu is going to be the same as before. It's going to be uh, minus one for the game specific, minus two for crossing the streams, but then back up to a minus one for optimal distance. And just when we thought things were looking good, a 3 minus 1 becomes a 2, and that is a fail. Now, we um, did technically start a second activation, so we are going to have to roll for fatigue. So a 1 or a 2, because it's a second activation, we'll see an increase. And things got cold in a hurry. So the... 101st does, in fact, end up increasing its fatigue for what turned in to be a, uh, a nothing of a second activation, which shows you a little bit of the dangers of, of pushing for a second activation. Um, but I think overall the Americans have to be reasonably satisfied with the situation in the Bastogne sector, at least for now. I'll go ahead and mark off the two-step losses here for the Panzer Grenadiers, and then we'll uh, kick it back over to the Germans. The Germans are going to come all the way back up to the northern flank. They're going to activate the 326th Volksgrenadier. And what they're trying to do up here is they, they would like to get across this stream here and not allow the Americans to use this to sort of anchor their uh, their left flank and that northern shoulder. So I'd like to get these guys activated before the Americans uh, can get the 9th Infantry Division into either a prepared defense or get those reinforcements deployed further to the east. So 
With that said, 326th has their trains on map right here in the entry hex with a complete MSR. They are not going to go into prepared defense, so the snafu roll is going to be, let's see, 326th actually has a fatigue level of 1, as you see here. So that's going to be a minus 1. They're not coordinated or mixed. Uh, there's no game specific. Trains are at optimal distance, which brings it back to 0. However, uh, they are using tracks with poor traffic ability, which is going to be a minus two, but they're not crossing any streams nor ghosted. So a minus two for 326 folks rented here. And it's not a particularly good day so far for the Germans. Seven minus two is a five. That's a partial activation, which means one objective marker and half movement. And I'll have to see where we... Um, where we want to place this marker. There may be a couple of um, couple of different areas we want to attack. So once I evaluate that, figure out what we're going to do, I'll go ahead and uh, get that marker placed. I may do some of the non-combat activities and then pick it up in the event that 326 does indeed make an attack. All right, here we are near the end of the activation for the 326. Now we were considering making an attack across the stream here on... Uh, uh, probably third of the 47th up here of 9th Infantry, but the attack would have been a minus one. We, we would have had an okay chance to uh, force a retreat there. Probably would have sustained at least one loss. Uh, and then we would have been across the river. However, uh, we would likely have just exposed him to a counterattack from the 9th Infantry Division and possibly have worsened our position up here. So instead we decided as we're shifting our left flank further to the west to make room for the 277th here and then hopefully try to get across the river down here. Um, we do have a couple of battalions that are in a position to make an attack on 3rd of the 9th from 2nd Infantry Division. So I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Our two artillery points were halved to one for the partial result and we are going to spend that one in a suppression barrage here. We're going to have 2nd of the 751st make the attack assisted by the Ursatz Battalion. It's an action rating of 2. He does have red support for 3, 4, 5 for the artillery, and 6 for the assist. Now the defenders have an action rating of 4. They have support for 5, and they are in terrain for 6. So it's a 6 minus 6, which is a uh, plus 0. So a straight up roll on the combat table. It's an average roll, which is just good enough to be an A1 desituational and traffic. So they did force the Americans out of the hex, but they didn't inflict any losses on them. They will have to go three hexes back here, and then we will advance into the hex here, and that'll be one loss for the uh, second of the 751st. And I think that's going to wrap it up for this activation. Let's go ahead and roll some fatigue here. They made an attack, so it's a three or less. And as usual, they fail their fatigue roll, and that will increase their fatigue to a level two. We'll go ahead and clean this up. And we're looking at um, a six to get a second activation. Why not? Wow. Now they get the six, so they do get a second activation. The snafu roll, uh, snafu modifiers, are going to be uh, one worse than last time. Uh, they have minus two for the fatigue. They have minus uh, four for the uh, tracks, but then it, it comes back up to a minus three for being at optimal distance. So it looks like a minus three for 326. And despite that, the 11 becomes an 8. That's actually a full activation. So now that we've got full movement and two objective markers to place, I'm going to take a minute here and figure out uh, how much, uh, try and maximize the amount of damage and inconvenience that they'll be able to do to the Americans here. And then we will pick back up with the second activation. As you can see, we decided to place both our objective markers right here on the 9th Infantry Battalion. And um, we've got two artillery points for this activation. Now the full movement does give us some opportunities here to sort of reposition and uh, make a little better attack. We're going to pull him back here for one and then go in here for two, three, four. We're going to bring the Ursatz Battalion up one, uh, 
two and a half. Now we're going to get first of the 751st across this stream into the woods here for two. And then second battalion is going to go one and two. Now we're in a position to make an attack on the uh, 9th Infantry Battalion here uh, without having to cross uh, the stream to do it. So seven, first of the 751st is going to make an attack here assisted by first of the 753rd. We're going to spend one artillery point in a suppression barrage. This will give us a action, action rating of two. We have red support for three, double objective zone four, five, six for the artillery, seven for the assist. The defenders have an action rating of four. They have uh, support for five and they are in terrain for six. So seven minus six is actually a plus one here, which gives us a, uh, a decent chance to at least take the hex. And it's not going to do that, I'm afraid. Five plus one is six. That is an A1. So all we did was uh, kill one step out of first of the 751st. But we're not done yet because the second of the 753rd is going to spot for a destruction barrage outside of uh, combat on this third of the 47th. We'll spend that one point there. Since he's in terrain, we're going to need a four, five, or six to inflict a step loss. And we just miss with that. So a less than uh, satisfactory uh, second activation for 326. Let's go ahead and roll for the um, let's go ahead and roll for the fatigue. It's going to be a three or less. And they actually do not increase fatigue there. So uh, that's going to wrap it up for. 326 Volks Grenadier. I will note, however, that uh, they have now cut off this large chunk of 2nd Infantry Division. There is one 99th Battalion in there, but these guys are now cut off with the zones of control here with no safe path back to, uh, back to the headquarters. So that's something the Americans are going to have to do something about because they don't want to, uh, they don't want to lose this much of uh, the 2nd Infantry Division. So with that, we will send it back to the Americans now. Well, neither side, neither the Germans nor the Americans, really have any formations that they need to activate right away before the other side gets an opportunity to activate certain formations. So with that being the case, I think for continuity's sake, we're going to go ahead and just start activating all the formations in a general area and uh, then move on. So rather than jumping all over the battlefield like we've been doing, I think for the rest of this turn we should be able to just kind of work our way maybe from north to south, um, uh, hopefully making it a little easier for everybody to follow exactly what's going on and, and where we are. And so with that, the Americans are going to go ahead and activate the 9th Infantry Division up here in the north. And they, uh, their trains are on map here, co-located with the 2nd Infantry Division's trains. So they do have a complete MSR. The question now is, do we want to try to establish a prepared defense or not? And I think um, what we'd like to do, uh, our primary objective, this activation is going to be sort of pushing these Germans back over the river here and trying to reestablish this um, eastern flank. Now, if we enter prepared defense, that will make it a little bit tougher to do that because we'll be suffering a minus one DRM to our combat attack, as well as having our movement and our available artillery. So I think what we'll do is maybe chance it one more time. Um, we're, we're not going to be able to enter prepared defense in a second activation were we to get one. So we would end up having to wait till the 20th in order to settle into a prepared defense. And I think that will be okay. Um, I, I'd rather try to uh, give us the best chance to uh, clear these guys out and perhaps with some extra artillery, maybe start uh, dishing out some punishment here to the 326th. It's not a very strong German formation. Maybe we can wear it down and perhaps draw off some uh, German forces from elsewhere to bolster this sector or perhaps even break through and uh, push the, uh, the shoulder further to the east. So let's forego the uh, prepared defense and go right to the snafu. The, um, the ninth has a fatigue level of one, as you can see here on the HQ card. 
So that's going to be a minus one. They're not marked with coordination. They're not mixed, although it's very close here with this 99th Infantry Battalion. And that these guys, the Americans really want to get these guys further south to give 9th a little more room to, uh, to maneuver here. And if it comes right down to it, we may just go ahead and, and um, burst right into the 99th blob and end up mixing ourselves if we need to. But um, for now, we're not mixed or coordinated. We do have that minus one still for the game specific. That's going to drop us to a minus two. The trains are at optimal distance. Bring it back to minus one, but we're using tracks with poor traffic ability. So that drops it all the way down to a minus three. Still, uh, we've got a, at least we have a shot at a full. Uh, we're not going to get that, but the seven becomes a four, which is a partial. So that's a single objective marker, which I think we will place right here. This, not that we're going to have an opportunity necessarily, but this will cover everybody um, within potential striking distance of the formation, this activation. And we have uh, four organic, which is unfortunately going to be halved to two. So our two artillery points for this activation. It will be enough, though, to uh, allow us to make the attack here and, and uh, hopefully push these guys back across the river. And we've got plenty of reinforcements here. I'm going to go ahead and um, start moving the formation. And when we get ready to make the attack or any other attacks that uh, may develop, we'll go ahead and uh, resume the, uh, the coverage then. Not uh, much to do here with the 9th. We've uh, pulled the 2nd Battalion of the 47th Regiment back into Kulter Herberg. And um, I think we will end up having the 2nd of the 47th make the attack assisted by 1st of the 47th. The reinforcements, we left the Engineer Battalion here at the uh, HQ as the Divisional Reserve for now. We've pushed two battalions of the 39th Regiment a little further to the south here, and we've sent the other regiment up here to the north. So the only thing we really have left to do is make the attack here, and we'll probably fire off a, a barrage on one of the other uh, German units to the east. Uh, let's go ahead and resolve the attack first. We'll spend one point for a suppression barrage. We have an action rating of four. We do have red support, makes it a five. Six, seven for the artillery, eight for the assist. Now the defenders have an action rating of two. They, uh, 326 does have support, so that's going to be three, and they are in terrain for four, but they are not in a prepared defense. So Eight minus four is a plus four in the attack. That's going to be a good result for the Americans. Nine plus four is 13. That's going to be a D2 and an automatic retreat on the Germans. So they are more than three from their HQ refuge. They will flip back to their moose side and be placed somewhere adjacent here. Um, I'll just put them right here for now. Second of the 47th, we'll go ahead and occupy the hex. And the little incursion across the stream there to the west has been cleared up by 9th Infantry Division. And I think what we will do is spend our remaining artillery point on a barrage here on this small ersatz battalion in uh, the village of uh, Hufen. So they are in terrain. It's going to be a 4, 5, or 6 to score a hit. And the 4 will inflict one step loss on the uh, ersatz battalion. And now we don't have any uh, isolation effects. We'll roll for fatigue, be it three or less because of the attack. And somewhat surprisingly, they don't accrue any fatigue. Now, do we want to try and get a second activation? And about the only thing we could do with the second activation is um, try to maybe start to get across the, um, the stream here and push these uh, Germans of the 326th back a little bit. I don't know if that's worth it or not, but uh, let's just roll the dice and see if we even get a second activation. We can decide what to do with it if we end up getting one. Uh, four, five, or six rolls of four. We will get a second activation. And the um, snafu is going to be the same as the first. It's going to be minus one for fatigue, minus two for game specific, back to minus one for the optimal distance, and then down to minus three for the poor traffic ability and the track. So minus three. And 
It's not a real good roll. Six becomes a three. That's just barely enough to get us another partial. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break it and I will record the two-step losses, the one-step loss, and then uh, we'll look at where we want to place the objective marker, figure out what we want to do with this particular uh, activation, and then, uh, and then we'll resume. All right, with the losses marked and the objective marker placed here on the village of Höfen, and uh, our two artillery points again, I think we're ready to proceed. Uh, there's not a whole lot we're going to be doing this particular uh, activation in terms of movement. We will get the 1st or 39th over his deployed side, and then we will have him move one hex across the river to the east here. And I think about the only other thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to make an attack right here on the village, garrisoned by the Ursatz Battalion, which we uh, were able to uh, take a... Uh, step loss from last activation and I think we're going to lead the attack with um, let's go with a third of the 40s uh, yeah let's do uh, let's do first of the 47th and we'll have the third assist and we'll spend one point for a suppression barrage so that's going to give us uh, let's see we said the first is attacking so that's an action rating of four we have red support for five, six, seven for the artillery, eight for the assist, and the defenders have an action rating of one. They do have red support, which uh, gives them a two. They are in terrain, which is three, and they have hex side terrain here, which is a four. Now, the um, sort of the reddish orange outline around the hex indicates that it is a uh, west wall fortification hex. This is uh, uh, defensible terrain for the Germans. So it's going to take an automatic retreat in order to actually kick the uh, Germans out of the village in this case. So we're looking at um, an eight minus four is a plus four on the attack. And it's not quite going to be good enough, I don't think. Uh, we missed it by one. That's six plus four is a 10. That's uh, an A1. Uh, which is not going to apply because the 326th is not in a prepared defense. It's a situational retreat and traffic. So because of the uh, defensible terrain here, the Ersatz Battalion will be able to ignore that and instead convert it to a step loss, uh, which is going to be their second step loss. And we'll mark traffic. Well, we didn't occupy the hex, so there won't be any traffic marked there. Now we have one artillery point left and I think we'll go ahead and shoot that off and we will drop that on um, let's say first of the 753rd here they are in terrain so it's going to be a four five or six and a three is not going to get it done so a uh, disappointing second activation for 9th infantry now let's see if they end up paying the price by accruing some fatigue here on a three or less and they do not, surprisingly. That's one of the very rare instances where a formation has avoided fatigue on both of its activations in a given turn. But that's going to wrap up 9th Infantry Division. And now we will uh, head back to the Germans. We'll probably move slightly to the east here and activate 277th Volksgrenadier. All right, Germans activating 277th Volksgrenadier. You can see we've shifted a little bit further to the east. Their trains are on map right up uh, the uh, primary road here, just off screen by about a hex. So they do have a complete MSR. They are not going to go into a prepared defense. So let's get right to the snafu roll. You can see their fatigue is a zero and they're not mixed or coordinated. There's no game specific. The trains are at optimal distance for a plus one. They're not crossing the streams or using tracks. So we're looking at a plus one overall for 277th Volksgrenadier. It's one of the few German uh, formations that still have a positive Snafu modifier, but it's not quite enough. That five plus one becomes a six, which is gonna be just short of a full uh, Snafu result. So it's a partial here for 277th. They are definitely going to be placing uh, an objective marker, and I think we're going to place it right here. Uh, their focus for today is going to be um, sort of making sure the uh, cutoff group of Americans here is, uh, is, is locked down and unable to get out. So 
the movement is going to slow them down quite a bit. Uh, I don't know that there's going to be a whole lot of action. We may have um, we may have an attack. Let's see. They've got three organic and no attached artillery, so that's going to round down to just a single point. We may end up doing one combat attack. If not, we will definitely fire off that barrage at one of the American hexes um, to try and kill a couple of steps. So I'm going to go ahead and just run through the activation off screen here, and I'll pick back up once we uh, figure out whether or not we're going to make an attack or, uh, or shoot uh, the artillery. Well, it may not look like much happened here and in point of fact not much did the halved movement and the rough terrain here really kind of limited uh, the entire division to about a, a single uh, hex advance the question is now do we make an attack or not and i think we are going to uh, not make an actual attack instead we're going to spend this one point in a destruction barrage on the uh, stack of two american battalions here, 1st and 2nd of the 38th. They're in terrain, so it's going to be a 4, 5, or 6. I'll just roll them both at the same time. The red die will be the 1st Battalion, the white die is the 2nd Battalion. And 5 and 3, that's one hit, so that's one step loss on 2nd of the 38th Battalion from 2nd uh, Infantry Division. That's going to reduce them actually to uh, half strength now. Uh, but it didn't cost the Germans any uh, potential casualties themselves. So with that, I think we're done with that first underwhelming activation. Now we're going to roll for uh, fatigue, and uh, we placed an objective marker, so it's going to be anything but a 1. And that's a good thing, because they ended up rolling a 2. So no fatigue increase again for 277th. Um, now, let's go ahead and see if we can get a second activation. It's going to require a 6, so it's highly unlikely. And that one says, nope, they are done. So, not a productive day for 277th at all. You can see they didn't really get the uh, Americans as surrounded as they, uh, as they were hoping to be able to do. So... We'll see what happens on the uh, on the twentieth, but still, I wouldn't say these Americans are in good shape as it is. It's um, it's kind of a serious situation developing right here. The Americans caught a little bit of a break by two seventy seventh being kind of slow to uh, to pursue them to the west today. And with that, we'll go back to uh, we'll go back to the Americans now. The Americans only have nine formations left to activate, and of those, three of them are the reinforcing uh, formations that are arriving on the northern edge of the map. And uh, I think I'm going to save all of the reinforcing formations for both sides until the very end. I'll probably do all of those activations off screen and then just show you how far they were able to get on, uh, on today. So with that, we're going to kind of slide down into the central sector. And the Americans have two formations here that are now with the advance of 2nd Panzer here up to uh, Hufeli's. Uh, essentially kind of cut off and surrounded. That's uh, CCR of the 9th and uh, the 112th Regiment from 28th Division. So I think we'll just go ahead and get these out of the way. Uh, it's not going to be very pretty, particularly for CCR of the 9th, which we'll activate right now. Now the trains for CCR of the 9th are actually on map, and they are down this secondary road uh, southwest of Hufeli's. In the vicinity of Bertone, the problem is that where the headquarters is, it can trace along this track here, and it's going to be cut off here at Hufeli's, and it's going to be cut off here by the uh, by the Panzers. If we go the other way up the track, it's going to run smack dab into uh, 116th Panzer. So we do not have a complete MSR. Since we cannot complete the MSR, we're going to have to remove the trains from the map. So we'll just place them here on the card. And now we are still in uh, sort of runaway mode. They're trying to retreat uh, to somewhere to safety. And um, this is, uh, is going to be a fairly quick activation, assuming they even pass their snafu roll. Uh, we're not going to go into prepared defense. Instead, we are going to, uh, going to just go straight to the snafu roll. You can see they have a fatigue level of 1, so that's going to be minus 1. They're going to get an additional minus 1 for the game-specific uh, DRM. That makes it a minus 2. 
and the trains are off map for an additional minus three, bringing it to a minus five. So they've got to roll an eight just to get a partial. And unfortunately, that seven just misses it. That will become a two and a fail. Um, do we try to get a second activation? Well, as far as isolation goes, one, two, three, four, they are within the command radius and they do have a safe path. So there's actually no threat of any isolation losses at this point in time. And I think if uh, they are going to eventually make it to safety, they're going to have to try to keep going. So let's roll and see if we can get a second activation. We're going to need a five or six. They do get, they do get a, another shot at it. Um, again, nothing really has changed except for the fact that the trains are now off map, which means they will be taking on an MSR blocked level one marker. And I'll mark that here in just a second. What that's going to do is make the snafu roll minus one for fatigue, minus two for game specific, minus five for the trains off map, and then minus six for a blocked level one. And strangely enough, that doesn't really matter. So they're gonna get their partial and unfortunately, see this, they may have had a shot if they had been able to get two activate, even two partial activations, they may have had a shot of getting to safety. But because they're in the middle of the woods here, this is all stop terrain, no matter which way they go. And I think we're going to try to um, go ahead and deploy them, first of all. And then we're going to move them onto the railroad tracks here. This will at least give them a, uh, a, a ZOC on this track heading down this way if 116th Panzer tries to come that way or if 560th goes around them. But unfortunately, that is going to be it for um, CCR of the 9th. And um, hopefully they can continue to kind of trek westward and escape the, uh, the Germans. But it's really not looking good for them right now. And with that, uh, I will go ahead and uh, get them marked with the MSR blocked and we'll switch it back to the Germans. The Germans have three formations remaining in the north other than the, uh, the reinforcing formations that are in the rear areas or entering the map this turn. So I think we'll kind of finish those up. Uh, those are 3rd Falschirm Jaeger, 18th Volksgrenadier, and 1st SS Panzer. Of the three, I anticipate uh, maybe only 1st SS really having much uh, action going on, if that. Although, potentially, 3rd Falschirm Jaeger could, uh, could make some attacks here as they try to finish off some of the stragglers around San Viet. So, we'll go ahead and activate 3rd Falschirm Jaeger first. We need to sort of get that formation uh, out of the way, uh, and they can, and they're also going to kind of serve as the uh, as the northern half of the of the net around 101st and CCB of the 9th. So with that, we're going to go ahead and flip over Third Falschmager headquarters located back here to the east. The trains are on map as you can see here, tracing right down the secondary road. They do have quite a lot of fatigue. Uh, they're going to probably end up taking a day or two off in the near future, but they're not quite where I need them to be. So we're going to uh, continue driving them westward today, or at least for this first activation. Now, with the uh, complete MSR and the trains on the map, we're not going into prepared defense. So the snafu roll is going to be a whopping minus three for fatigue. They're not mixed or coordinated. There's no game specific anymore. The trains are at optimal distance, which brings it up to a minus two, but they are ghosted, which drops it back down to a minus three. So minus three for third Falsham Jaeger. Wow. Okay, they must have heard uh, something about a couple of days off coming up here because they were able to get a 12. Minus three is a nine. That is a full activation. So apparently they want to get to where they're going right now so they can take a couple of days off. Let's see. That's going to give us two objective markers. It's going to give us our full complement of artillery, which in this case is three organic and two uh, attached. So they really have uh, fairly impressive five artillery points to use once they, uh, if they manage to get a, a full activation like they have. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. Obviously, we'd like to finish off these guys or at least trap them, keep them from getting away. And we've also got uh, some guys up here at CCB of the 9th located here and here. And since we're going to get a full movement, there may be a possibility of uh, taking Amblev here, which um, would open up this N12 highway up here 
to the north, which may help ease some logistical um, congestion uh, traveling through Sanvit and using roads to the south here. So I'll take a look at where, uh, where we're going to place these objective markers, see if we can uh, do as much damage as possible here, because I don't know that we're going to get another chance uh, for third Falschmager to really do much of anything over the next few days. Then we'll uh, go ahead and continue once we've got um, got the plan for the day figured out and the battalions on the march. All right, we've moved most of the uh, formation at this point. We still have uh, these three battalions, the headquarters and the trains that were yet to move. But I wanted to uh, pick it back up here because we do have uh, two attacks that we're going to try to make. Third Falsham Jaeger decided to get a little greedy, perhaps, and um, try to uh, attack both the Amblev as well as the uh, 106 battalions here that are trying to run away. So let's go ahead and resolve the Amblev attack first. The... Um, Let's see, the first of the fifth is going to make the attack here, and it's going to be assisted by first of the eighth. We will spend one of our artillery points in a suppression barrage. That's going to give us an action rating of two. We have no support, unfortunately, and no double objective zone. So it's going to be three, four for the artillery, five for the assist. Now, on the defender's side, they have an action rating of three. The uh, CCB of the 9th, I don't believe they have any support. Let me see, where did they go? CC, they Actually, they do have support, so that's going to make that a 4. They are in terrain for a 5, and there's Hexide terrain for 6. So this is by no means a, uh, a given. They are not in a prepared defense, however. So, uh, let's see, we've got the defender, we said 6, and it is a mere 5 for the attackers. They may have been better off dropping a whole bunch of artillery on them, but um, this is actually a minus one. So we're going to need uh, we're going to need a uh, we're going to need to roll really well. Boy, I should have just dropped the artillery on them. Maybe I should do that instead. Um, yeah, you know what? Let's do that. We're just going to go ahead and drop a uh, three point destruction barrage on the uh, on the battalion there. In Amblev, it's in terrain, so it's going to be a four, five, or six to get any uh, step losses. And we scored one hit there, and one more is a miss. So only one step loss on the uh, battalion there. That might actually be enough to do it, though. Let me see what their current strength is. Um, Twenty. Yep, that was the last um, strength point of the twenty-seventh. So. That will make the attack successful and bloodless for the uh, Falschenjäger. And then we're going to move on down now to um, the attack here on 2nd Battalion of the 424th. We will make this attack with... Um, what do we want to make this with? Uh, look at either the Pioneers or 3rd Battalion there. Let's go with the Pioneers assisted by 3rd Battalion of the 8th Regiment. We will spend one point in a suppression barrage. And it's going to be very similar to the Amblev attack. Uh, as far as the attackers go, we have an action rating of two. We have uh, no support, no double objective zone, three, four for artillery, five for the assist. The defenders, however, are on their unprepared side with an action rating of one, uh, which uh, is not going to give them any support. They are in terrain, though, so that's going to be a two. So we have a 5 minus 2 is a plus 3 on the attack for the Pioneers. It's an okay result. Uh, 7 plus 3 becomes 10. That is, a, uh, that is a situational retreat and traffic. However, as you can see here, the uh, Germans have moved around and they are uh, zocked in. They have no safe path back to the headquarters out here. So instead, they will suffer a one-step loss and remain where they are. That's 2nd of the 424th. Uh, 106th. What do they look like? They've got plenty left. So just a step loss for them. No loss for the, uh, uh, for the Germans, however. And then we will spend our last artillery point in a destruction barrage on the 1st of the 424th. They are in terrain, so it's a 4, 5, or 6. And that misses. 
I'm going to go ahead and uh, mark off the losses to the 27th as well as the 2nd of the 424th. I'll probably finish up the movement here and we will continue once we get uh, to at the end of the activation with the fatigue roll and any possible second activation roll. Picking up uh, again here at the end of the activation, you can see they've been able to throw a few more battalions out to the west here. They're in contact with the uh, remnants of CCB of the 9th there just across the, uh, the stream. We have no isolation effects here. The headquarters did displace forward to Amblev, and we have um, changed our MSR. We've shifted the trains from the south up to the north here. So they are tracing back up the N12 here and then off to the uh, off to the east. We do have to roll for fatigue. We made two attacks, so it's going to be a three or less. And somewhat surprisingly, they managed to pass the fatigue roll. Uh, would have been nice if the Germans could have been passing all these fatigue rolls earlier in, uh, in the attack, but uh, I guess we'll take what we can get. Now, we do want to try to get a second activation, so that's going to require a six. We do not get the six, so that's going to do it for third Fallschirmjäger here on the 19th of December. Uh, they are still fatigued three. They are in a position where over the next couple of days, if I really wanted to, I could just have them sort of uh, take a break, try to rest and uh, eliminate some of that uh, some of that fatigue. But we'll just that's going to depend an awful lot on uh, how the situation in this sector develops uh, tomorrow. So we'll see. But for now, we're going to go back to the Americans. For the Americans, we're going to go right back to the central sector where we were uh, for CCR of the 9th. And uh, we'll have another short, ugly activation here. This time it's going to be for the 112th Infantry Regiment, which, as you can see, is in kind of the same situation as CCR of the 9th. Surrounded by the Germans, they've got 116th to their north, 2nd Panzer to their west, 560th and 150th Panzer Brigade coming up behind them on the uh, east and south. The trains are actually on the map. They are just west of Bastogne currently. However, there's no way for them to trace a complete MSR, so the trains will have to come off. And we will move on to uh, the snafu roll. They are marked with coordination, so that's a minus one. You can see they have a fatigue level of one. That's going to be minus two, minus three for the game specific. The trains are off map, making it a minus six. Now, one thing that I did forget to do, I probably, in hindsight, probably would have done, would be to uh, use some air points. I have two American air points remaining. And uh, perhaps should have used those to modify the um, snafu roll for CCR. But I think what we'll do is uh, we're looking at a minus six now for one twelfth. Let's go ahead and use both of them. We we'll use the uh, the two air points that we have left. That's going to bring it up to a minus four for the uh, snafu roll for one twelfth. So still not great. Um, and <laughs> the uh, six. Minus four becomes a two, which is a fail. Now, we do have a little bit of an issue here with, uh, we'll lose the coordination, so that's out of the way. We do have a bit of an issue with uh, isolation losses here. You can see right now, uh, the 112th has the second battalion stacked with them, or the remnants of second battalion. And 1st Battalion is off here to the east, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. It is outside of command radius. It is also surrounded by ZOCs and units, which means it has no safe path back. We, um, we don't have an MSR blocked marker yet because we just pulled the trains off this activation. But what that does mean is that the 1st Battalion of the 112th is going to suffer two step losses for, uh, from isolation. And I think that might actually finish them off. Let's see. That is, who's that, 1st Battalion? Actually, yes, they have exactly two steps remaining. So the last of 1st Battalion ends up surrendering. And it's going to remove them. And that's going to leave just the 2nd Battalion here at the headquarters with a single step. Now, um, we can 
try to get a second activation and um, I say why not there's no point just sitting around waiting for the Germans to uh, to come and get them so uh, we're going to need a four five or six and we do not get that so one twelfth is done as I said it was going to be a short and even uglier activation than we saw for CCR at the ninth I would say both of these formations are um, very much on the verge of being uh, eliminated so I don't hold out much hope of uh, being able to get the, to keep these on map beyond uh, tomorrow the 20th and with that we're going to go right back to the Germans the Germans are going to return to the uh, northern sector and we're going to go ahead and activate first SS Panzer here and as you've probably noticed there hasn't been a lot of action in several of the uh, last activations. I think we're kind of getting to that point where the um, the remainder, except for perhaps 7th Army Sector, are going to be units that are um, not necessarily on the front line. They're going to be more marching than fighting. But 1st SS, I think, is um, one of the last exceptions to that. They are, uh, they are going to be moving, but I think what we're going to try and do with 1st SS today is get them to continue moving to the west here. 12th SS has come out here to the um, uh, area just east of Malmody, but they're not going to stay there. We want 12th SS to keep driving westwards. So 1st SS is going to kind of follow along and um, keep a gap from opening up between where 12th SS can drive and then the rest of the follow-on formations. And you can see we've got 12th Volksgrenadier here moving up into the uh, Elsenborn Ridge area. So the idea is we'll shift 1st SS to the west and then have 12th uh, Volksgrenadier fill in. We also have 18th Volksgrenadier that has not activated yet down to the south there. We'll see where we can plug them into the line here for the Germans. But let's go ahead and get going with 1st SS and see if, um, if they're able to get an activation because uh, that's been a bit of a theme for today as well. Their trains are on the map. They are just to the east of uh, Bullingen here. They do have a complete MSR. They're not going to go into a prepared defense. So we're looking at a snafu roll uh, modifier of, um, let's see, zero for their fatigue. They're not marked with coordination mixed or um, any game specific. So they're at optimal distance for plus one here. However, they are crossing the streams with uh, 12th Volksgrenadier. Um, as you can see, the headquarters is tracing down here through Budingen and then back out to the east. So minus one for crossing the streams is going to offset that plus one for optimal distance. So just a straight up dice roll for the uh, snafu roll. Wow. Wow. Uh, the three is not a good roll, but it is just enough to get that partial activation. Uh, this is... Again, it's a disappointing activation for the uh, for the Germans. We only get a single uh, objective marker, and we've got three organic and three attached. So instead of six, we're only going to end up with three artillery points. Um, where do we want to go with these? I think with the emphasis shifting to the west can we even get anybody out there uh, one two that's one ah, see we can but it's uh, all right we're going to be able to do what we had wanted to do but not necessarily with the units we wanted to do them with but that's all right um, we will place our objective marker here that should cover uh, all the first here as well as the 99th there. And with half movement, that's going to force us to use the Pioneers someplace we really kind of didn't want them to be. And let's see, I think this guy can go one, two, and they should be able to come back here for one and a half, two. We need to get Knittel out of there. We're going to shift the headquarters to the west as well. So that's one, two, and a half. 
and we're going to put Knittle. Now I'll think about where we're going to move those two guys, but let's go ahead and uh, we are going to make at least one attack, and that's going to be on 2nd of the 18th here. And it's going to be 1st of the 2nd, assisted by the Pioneer uh, Battalion here. We're going to spend one artillery point for suppression barrage. That's going to give us an actual rating of four. We have red support for five, no double objective zone, six, seven for the artillery, eight for the assist. The Americans have an actual rating of four. They have support for five. They are not in a prepared defense and they are not in terrain. So only a five for the second battalion. Eight minus five is a plus three on the combat table. And that's uh, probably good enough. Uh, six plus three becomes a nine. It's no loss for the Germans. It's a situational retreat and traffic. So with that, the second will go one, two, three, and he will flip to his move side, and they will occupy the hex. And I'll mark that with traffic. Doubt it's going to have an effect on the rest of the activation. Um, we will have, we'll have the pioneers spot a one point destruction barrage on task force Davison here outside of combat. So I think he is in the, yep, he is not in terrain. So it's a three or better to uh, get a hit. And they do inflict one step loss on Davison. And we'll spend our last artillery point in a destruction barrage on 1st of the 18th, spotted by 3rd of the 1st. I believe they are also not in terrain. So a 3 or better to inflict another step loss, and the 1 uh, is a miss. Now, what do we do with Knittel and 2nd here? Um, how many steps does Canel? Canel's full strength. I wonder. Let's let's try uh, six, eight. This is going to be that's nine. Oh man, that's not. Oh, that's not good. Uh, Canel. Just thinking about having Canel come up and uh, do an engagement here with Davison, but that's not really a good idea because Canel's going to have. He's got an action rating of 5, but he's only got a 1 AV. Davison's looking at a 4 and a 4, plus he has multiple supports, which would give him a total of 9. That'd be a minus 3 on the engagement if Knittel uh, drove across the tracks here to, uh, to try to engage him. Um, let's see. And that would require a 9 to uh, inflict a step loss on Davidson, and uh, that would still inflict a step loss on Knittel. I think we've got better uses for Knittel. Um, the question is where? Um, let's see. That guy there in Camp Elsenborn. And two, what do we want to go? Two. Let's one. Two, I think. And we I don't know where we're gonna put Knittel. Where do we want to drive him? I can't send him here because this is a real unit. It's going to force at least one stopping engagement and maybe maybe that's just what i need to do suck it up and then um, at least i'm in a position where he can make an attack because he's a dual unit he he's got other ways to uh to go about attacking davison um yeah let's go ahead we're gonna do it that's one two three four all right so now the stopping engagement as we said uh, with um davison going to be a minus three and as expected if you're going to roll badly might as well roll badly here that uh, becomes a one that is a fire loss and traffic so that's a uh, first step loss for Knittel 
and he is going to be stopped there uh, with traffic in the hex, but I think the entire formation has moved, so that's not going to be an issue. And yeah, we are looking now at the uh, fatigue. We've made one attack. It's going to be three or less. They avoid fatigue. So the Germans are finally on a roll with, with um, fatigue rolls. And let's see if second SS can get a second activation. It's going to be a four, five, or six. And they roll another six. So um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's roll the uh, snafu roll. You can see the trains have moved. They still have zero fatigue. Uh, they're not mixture coordinated. Uh, they have got plus one. Or actually, the trains had not moved. The HQ has moved. The trains are back here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, let's one, two, three, four, five. Let's move these forward a little bit here. Keep them at optimal distance. Now they're ghosted. They're still. They're not no longer crossing the streams with twelfth Wolf's Grenadier, but they are crossing the streams now with twelfth SS. So that's going to be optimal distance plus one, ghost minus one and then another minus one for crossing the streams. So it's a net minus one for uh, first SS. They roll much better this time. That's a nine, it's gonna be a full activation. That's gonna give them six artillery and two objective markers. Go ahead and clean this up. I'm gonna go ahead and um, figure out what we wanna do here and then we'll continue. Starting out the second activation for the uh, 12, or first SS here, we've placed both our objective markers here. Again, that's going to cover the headquarters and the uh, first infantry division uh, battalions in this area here. I think we're going to start off with an attack, actually. Um, Kampf Group Knittel is going to attack Davison, assisted by the pioneers here. We will spend one point in a uh, suppression barrage. We've got an action rating of five. They're dual for six, seven for the double objective zone, eight, nine for the artillery, and 10 for the assist. The Americans have an action rating of four. They are dual for five. They um, have no, or they don't need support because they're dual. They're not in prepared defense and they are not in terrain. So it's just a five. So a 10 minus five is a plus five on the attack. And it's not a very good roll, but the plus five is going to make a big difference. Six becomes 11. That is a D1 automatic retreat. So with the automatic retreat, Davison will lose a second step. That's going to leave him with one. And then he will flip to his move side and go one, two, three. I guess he'll go back here on the trail. And Knittel will occupy the hex. And he is going to be finished along with the pioneers. Next, we're going to have these guys go one, two, three, and we'll bring second of the first in here. And we're going to have second of the first make an attack on the battalion here, assisted by second of the second. And again, we will spend one artillery point in a suppression barrage. So we're looking at a four. Red support is five, six for the double objective zone, seven, eight with the artillery, nine for the assist. The defenders have an actual rating of four. They have support for five and they are in terrain for six. So a nine minus six is a plus three. Oh, that's just an awful roll. Uh, that is the plus three gets it to five, which will avoid two step losses. So it's one step loss for second of the first for uh, first SS there. And that's going to bring that to a stop. Um, kind of makes me think twice about what I'm about to do, but we're going to bring these guys um, over the lake here. We're going to have third of the first make an attack on first of the 18th assisted by the unit they're now stacked with. That would be first of the second. And we'll spend another artillery point for suppression barrage. This is going to be very similar. It's going to be four. Red support is five. Objective zone, double objective zone is six, seven, eight, artillery, nine for the assist. And on the American side, it's a four. Support gives them five. They are not in terrain and they are not in prepared defense. So it's a plus four this time. 
and hopefully the uh, Germans can roll better than they did last time. And indeed they did. They actually averaged it out. So the box cars plus four gives them a 15. That's going to be a D2 and an automatic retreat with the safe path uh, available to the first of the 18th. They're going to go back to the HQ refuge out here. And I think we will keep these guys. Uh, we'll keep them maybe right here. And then third, we'll enter the hex. Um, now, let's see, that was first of the 18th, suffers two step losses. That's going to drop them to half strength. What do we have left for the Germans here? Um, they, they, I think, yeah, why not? We've got three artillery points left, so first of the first here back at uh, Camp Delsenborn, we'll spend one artillery point. They're going to spot for a destruction barrage outside of uh, combat on 2nd of the 23rd, which is in the clear here, which means a three or better. And a four will do it. So 2nd of the 23rd is going to take a step loss. That's their first step loss. And We'll drop another one on uh, first of the 23rd. They are in terrain, so it's a four, five, or six. That one misses. And then the last one, we will um, shoot at third of the 23rd here in Elsenborn. Four, five, or six. And that misses as well. I think that's everybody moved. We are going to flip the trains over for, with the second activation, get them out of their ghost mode. And now I think we'll clean up and make a fatigue roll with the attacks. It's a three or less. And look at that. Another successful fatigue roll for the Germans. That's going to leave first SS at fatigue zero. It's going to wrap up for the um, 19th here. They managed to shift a bit to the uh, west, they had that one bad attack. Otherwise, they would be in a um, good position as far as kind of caving in the left flank of 1st Infantry Division. So 1st Infantry Division is going to have to figure something out uh, as far as coming back here and bolstering their flank because now they're starting to open up once. If they can get 3rd of the 16th out of the way here, they've really kind of opened up a direct line to the uh, MSRs that uh, are supplying most, well, 1st, 99th, uh, division here. It's not necessarily looking real good for the Americans, but it's not uh, beyond repair yet. So with that, let's send it back to the Americans. For the Americans, we're moving down into the Bastogne sector again, and uh, we're going to go ahead and activate 1 10th. They also have CCB of 10th armored in the uh, in the Bastogne vicinity that has yet to activate. And we'll probably see some action from those guys here shortly. But we're going to start here with uh, 110th. Their trains are on map located just south of uh, Bastogne here, and they do have a complete MSR. I think 110th uh, is going to continue to try to pull back to the west here. And the question is whether we want to come back straight back to the west or, or maybe down to the southwest here. I think we're going to move here to the southwest. I'd like to get their trains untangled from 101st Airborne and um, by, by actually moving them further south, that's going to end up forcing them across some tracks here uh, initially. But I don't think it's going to be too big a deal because once the 110th gets pulled back a little bit further, we're probably content to leave them where they are and they don't have much fatigue. So they can probably uh, stand a uh, Trax DRM to the snafu roll. Speaking of which, um, we now need to decide before we do the snafu roll, if we're going to go into a prepared defense, that's going to have our movement, but um, I think that's okay. Uh, we're not, we don't necessarily have to, flee for our lives at this point. So we are going to uh, establish a prepared defense for the one tenth. That's going to make them a little tougher to move if uh, the Germans ever get around to activating 26th Volksgrenadier. I'm going to go ahead and mark that. 
Now we'll get to the snafu roll. You see they have fatigue zero. They're not mixed or coordinated. They do get a minus one for the game specific. The trains are at optimal distance, which is going to bring it back up to zero. But they are crossing the streams, which is going to drop it back down to a minus one. So not a bad snafu DRM. And uh, they roll a five, which isn't a great roll, but it's certainly good enough. That becomes a four, which gives them a partial, which is what they were going to, uh, which is all they could really expect anyway from... Um, the uh, establishment of the prepared defense so with that let's see we're going to pull one two straight back on the road here what we do with our engineers um one well, let's try that one two and then the headquarters will go one two three and as i said we wanted to untangle it so we'll go one two three four five put them back here on the highway at uh on prey with the msr running straight down the highway off map we did not place a uh, an objective marker which means we have no um, fatigue roll to make and now the only question is do we want to try for a second activation or are we happy with where they are i think i don't want to get them too close in here with the uh, with the 101st you can see their blob right here they're kind of backed up against it um yeah that's fine i think we are content with that for the 101st so We'll call it a day. We'll leave them where they are. They managed to uh, enter a prepared defense, withdraw to uh, the Bastogne perimeter proper, and uh, now they're just waiting to see if uh, 26 Volks Grenadier is going to follow them up. Speaking of 26 Volks Grenadier, since we're here and they haven't activated yet, we might as well go ahead and take care of that. We'll go ahead and flip over the HQ. The trains for 26 Volks Grenadier are on map and they are all the way back across this track here, way out to the east, just barely at optimal distance. So we're not going to go into prepared defense. You can see they have a fatigue of four. Best they're going to really get is a uh, partial. And I don't know if they're even going to get that. They've got, because uh, they're going to have a minus four for the fatigue. They're going to have a min another minus two for using tracks with the poor traffic ability. That's a minus six. Optimal distance is going to bring it up to a minus five. They would have to roll boxcars to get a full activation. And they're going to need to roll an eight or better just to get a partial. I'm wondering if this might not be a decent opportunity to just go ahead and do a recovery activation uh, today. And that will give them a better opportunity to, um, to get something going um tomorrow perhaps the uh weather clears up we don't have mud and uh, we get some good traffic ability on the on the roads let's go ahead and just do that that's gonna reduce their fatigue by one and if we can get some decent weather tomorrow that all of a sudden improves their snafu drm by uh, by two uh, just by doing that and again if not an ideal situation for 26 volt Grenadier, but I, I don't think it would have been worth trying to uh, trying to get a partial. And um, of course, we would have no opportunity for a second activation since we had a fatigue level of four. That unfortunately is going to do it for 26 volt Grenadier. You know, I think about displacing the trains forward, maybe getting them off of the tracks, putting them along the um, the highway here. However, that's going to end up crossing the streams with the 150th Panzer Brigade, and they would be ghosted. So we don't really gain anything. It's going to be a minus two DRM, uh, which is the same as running them across the tracks here. If we happen to get better weather tomorrow, and perhaps if 150th Panzer Brigade continues moving westward, then maybe we can uh, displace the trains forward and shorten that, uh, that supply tail a little bit. Now, let's see, we've got uh, one, two, three, six American formations left. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine. You know, I think we'll probably go ahead and just um, wrap this episode up here. That's going to leave us with the uh, fourth and final part of the 19th coming up. That should be a fairly short uh, video because as as I've mentioned before, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's about seven of the formations remaining uh, to activate are all reinforcing formations that are going to be probably nowhere near the front uh, this day. So we've got pretty much just 7th Army uh, for the, uh, the 7th Army sector for the Germans primarily and, uh, and then some reinforcing stuff. So that's going to do it for today. We'll pick up. We'll have a short uh, part four soon, I hope, get this uploaded and then uh, we'll be moving on to the 20th. Thanks for watching today. Take care. We'll see you next time.